The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric's Family BBQ.com. Eric's Family Barbecue has arrived and is simply the best barbecue in Arizona. Come satisfy your taste buds with meats that are smoked over mesquite wooden sides that are made with fresh ingredients and tons of love. They have the best juiciest brisket, pulled pork, rib sausage, turkey, or everyone's favorite, the Pitmaster Sampler that includes all the meat and four sides. Mac and cheese, potato salad, coleslaw, corn, or beans. Yum. And for dessert, try some creamy banana pudding. Amazing. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be sorry. Dine in or take it to go. Go to Eric's Family bbq.com for more info Holmberg's morning sickness you've been deceived by an agent of satan himself he's evil sitting right here come on no no he's not he's not evil he's just a bit rude yes there you go thank you silence the voice of the news out of miami yesterday was very confusing they're like one you know there's a hundred people unaccounted for they don't know if they were in the building, not in the building. Fifty-nine. Yeah, it's crazy. But now the numbers are making sense. Like, okay, a building fell down, and there's people. Like yesterday, they're like, meh, one person's gone. We're pretty sure that's it. Yeah, it's been sinking since the nineties. Yeah, and then yeah, this building we've known about being structurally unsound Turns for a while. Brady was right. It was built on sand. Well, it was built on sand, but they, they you can build on sand. Yeah. But if you start seeing structural damage, you're supposed to say, hey, nobody's allowed in there. And if engineers have gone by, there's and they no do damage, it's just sinking. There's a job called building inspection. You're supposed to notice that, and especially when you're renting to hundreds of people. They're like, hey, guys, the building has a structural problem, and that does happen, and usually it's very easy to fix. But you've got to get the people out of it. I, so, re- I read somewhere that they said that one of the, one of the, uh, uh, the, the people that live there went into the parking garage under there, and half of it was like underwater. Yeah. Like they, when well, they pulled in, it's like, well, was yeah. it sinking already? <laughs> or? We kind of knew. Well, that's yeah. where there was, you know, there's going to be lawsuits like crazy, but a lot of people are missing, but they don't know if they're actually in there or so they're trying to contact everybody. That's a, that's a rough story. It's crazy. So, but yeah, so the news yesterday was like, this doesn't make sense. How does a building fall and one person's hurt? When you see the picture, you're like, there's two in the morning? There's going to be a bunch of people that got it. And so now it's starting to make sense, but. It's a tragic mess. Uh, and also, I, this news I found hilarious. Have you seen the uh, Glendale Mayor's story? Oh, is this good stuff? Uh-oh. So he went to the UFC event, uh, what was that, two weeks ago, a week or yeah. two ago, over there at the, uh, at the Gila Glen- River yeah. thing. And uh, when he was leaving the parking garage, his name is uh, Mayor Jerry Weir's, Weir's, W E I E R E I E I O. We're Iyers. We Iyers. We Iyers. It's a weird name. Uh, Mayor Jerry uh, was going through the arena and going out of the parking structure. And he's like, I'm not waiting in any lines to get out of here. So he starts passing everybody. He's the jackass that when everybody's uh, waiting to leave, gets off to the left yeah. and then tries to gum it up, s- get back, to the end back around. in. And he's getting, and so he's causing traffic problems. Well, one of the dudes. Uh, in the in the thing's job is to make sure nobody does that. So he's like, hey, and he gives the car the thing. He's like, knock it off. Get in line and go out the north entrance. And Dr. Jerry says, uh, or uh, Mayor, Mayor Jerry uh, says, uh, and, and actually the guy doing it, I'm trying to find his name, uh, uh, Nage Bauer. They both have crazy names. That uh, I, I'd like to buy a vowel, please. So <laughs> Nage Bauer's in there, and he said, he went to the city council yesterday to talk to this about it. So he's standing there and, and I don't think anybody knew this had happened. Huh. So Nej Bauer shows up at the Glendale City Council because I got a little story about your mayor here. He's going fast enough. He could have rear-ended the peep, stopped in front of him. I yelled at him to stop and head off the north exit. He pulls up next to me, seconds later, rolls his window down and says, can the attitude. You don't want to start with me. I'm Mayor Jerry. But he didn't say I'm Mary Jerry. You don't want to start with me. And, uh, and then the, the parking lot attendant said, well, I don't think you want to mess with me. Go to the north exit the way I'm instructing you. And that's when Mayor Jerry uh, <laughs> would do one last thing to hold up traffic. Because he goes, hey, you. And the guy looks at him and he goes, you each die. <laughs> I'm Mayor Jerry. And Nesh Bauer says, so I said the appropriate response, which was, uh, you, get out of my garage. And he said, I found out later from a hotel employee that when he got to the top of the ramp, he stopped again. And said, the guy running the garage down there uh, should be terminated. And I am the mayor. I was about to get out of my car and kick his ass. Now, keep in mind, this guy's telling the story yesterday to the mayor and the city council. 
So Nehar said to the mayor's uh, office, uh, said the mayor's office called Gila River later, like the next day, and said, we're going to fire this particular guy who was working this particular place because he was throwing his mayor dick around a little bit. He's going to get a <laughs> parking lot attendant fired in his own city because all they're interested in is these politicians making sure that everybody's got a job, and they, but just don't cross them, right? I'm King Kong. So he stood there yesterday in front of the city council of Glendale and Mayor Jerry, who had just mouthed off and now staring at the guy. He thought, I Mayor Jerry in front of my friends. I, I, you see what I did? I'm the mayor. And the guy said, sir, if you'd like to kick my ass, I'd be happy to meet you in any boxing gym in the Valley. And you strap on the gloves and you get in the gym and I'll give you a shot at the title. <laughs> and Mayor Weirs goes, all right, that's enough. Folks, we're done. We'll end it with that. No more uh, further business before this council tonight. I'd like to thank everybody, well, almost everybody for coming. <laughs> to tonight's meeting fantastic uh and then so uh the news didn't care about anything that was going on they find out about this they go over to mayor jerry and they're like what's going on with you in the parking lot attendant and mayor jerry's office is comment at this time <laughs> of course i not. would like to watch this i'd like to watch a, put this yes. out of the rock it's time for us to have one of these politicians that does or anybody the don't you know who i am guy yes. who tries to swing his Get local his celebrity dick around to actually have to to go in and and fight the lesser than peasant that he was picking on a second earlier. Did you say he's a lawyer? Who? The mayor? The mayor? Or doctor? You said no, I doctor. called him a doctor. Oh, doctor you called Jerry. him a doctor. I don't know what he is. Mayors are a bunch of dicks between Mayor Jerry and <laughs> yeah. the morning mayor. I mean, come on. All mayors This is ridiculous. <laughs> hey, all right, Eventually. buddy. <laughs> I'm a mayor, too. All right, buddy, move. Hey, I got to get out of this parking lot because if I don't deserve it, oh, 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 does. All right, buddy. Stupidest catchphrase in the history of words. <laughs> Yeah. My shoes are on the wrong feet is a better catchphrase <laughs> than if you don't deserve it, who does? Idiot. But yeah, now you brought up the other mayor. But Mayor Jerry. <laughs> there's a list. Oh, there's a lot of <laughs> yeah. dickhead mayors, but Pratt tops it. <laughs> he doesn't even know what a mayor is. He has a gavel. All right, all right. And he hits this dumb gavel. I'm like, that's a judge's thing. Mayors just call meetings to order with gavels. They don't stop. You're an idiot. <laughs> Objection. Like, ugh, I used to listen to him in school. Hey, the mayor's talking. Objection. I'm like, oh. Objection. You're so stupid. You're just dumb. And I knew it when I was 17. Anyway, so Mayor Jerry and Nez Bauer, you guys want to fight. We'll sponsor it. I'll definitely sponsor it, and I'll, <laughs> I'll be the Don King of this thing. I want to watch a parking attendant and a mayor fight. I want to watch somebody get a shot at a politician who mouthed off to him once. You see that all the time when these guys like wander around like there's something, and then you hear a story later where he's like, you treated me like garbage. And he's like, I'm the mayor of this. There are city council people that think that there's something special. The only one I wouldn't fight is that Sal DiCiccio because you might beat him up. But he's yeah. going to show up at your house at, at, late at night. Yeah. He he's knows like, people. Yeah, I got, uh, a, you know. I got a guy I'm sure. Oh, no, we know, Brett. We know. <laughs> DiCiccio doesn't lose wars. Maybe he loses a battle. But in the end, when those guys are crawling through your window at night, a little mouth over you. You want to cheat you on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want to cheat you. A little hand over your baby's mouth to keep him quiet. <laughs> While we let your wife know what we're doing to you in the other room. You go ahead. You want to box the cheat you? Okay. I might lose that boxing match. I'm not a boxer per se. But what I am is a guy who wins wars. You don't fight a the cheat you. You just don't. Because you kick his ass, and then the second you start bragging to Chicho, it's like, okay, I see. Showboat. Round two. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Ding, ding. This fight isn't as over as you think it is. <laughs> Look about you. Next thing you know, you're getting traffic tickets you didn't get. and Oh, what a shame. We just annexed some of your front yard. We're going to put up a Walmart. Mm. You can't do that to Chicho. I just did. <laughs> you got a strong right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Probably worry more about where you're placing that next time. Yeah, so uh, I like Mayor Jerry. Uh, I think he's got some guts. Because to sit and tell a parking lot attendant, as the mayor, in the city you actually are mayor of, to tell someone, anyone, generally, to eat and die just because you don't want to be in a line. <laughs> pretty awesome. That's pretty great. And to Nezbauer, for the balls for that guy to go, oh, I'm going to go. And he recognized him as the mayor. He's like, you, you've got in a fight with the mayor. Do you even know that? He's like, I don't know. Go to the city council meeting Tuesday night and, and just sit and wait his turn. Anybody in a, have, a, have something to say to the council? We've I, reached the public commentary I do. portion. I got something to say. <laughs> and they challenge him. You said you wanted to kick my ass? I'm standing right here, old man. And then, so it sounds like he's a tough guy, right? It sounds like a parking lot tough guy. This guy's 
He doesn't look that out of shape. He's it would be an old man fight, but I would watch it. KUP you wonder banners if the, everywhere. If the mayor at a previous events have, has always done that, gone out that side. <laughs> That's a tradition. And this is the one yeah, it's guy. A tradition. <laughs> this is the one guy that. Uh, Bauer finally As stands up. mayor of this <laughs> fine city, I'd like to say to all of you, each die. Don't wait in line. Everyone is stopped so I can go around them. That's how parking garages work. I'd like to uphold the long-standing yeah. Vendale tradition. <laughs> the long-standing tradition of me skirting the line and telling people to each die. And As, have a good yeah. night. As the mayor of Munchkin Land... It gives a little uh, scroll out. Here you go. A proclamation for you to eat and die. But then to have the mayor get so mad that he calls up the next day and tells Gila River to fire the guy. Look at him. There's Jerry Weirs. We've all seen mayor a Jerry. Jerry. They all, we, we all know a Mayor Jerry. Look yep. I think this about people that look like Mayor Jerry. And this is judgmental, possibly inaccurate, but probably not. Jerry's got a bottle of vodka in the upper tank of his toilet. He's got some cherry blossom. Uh, I think there were some pops involved. Yeah, Jerry, uh, Jerry drinks because nobody uh, – that beard is uh, – It's the everybody's got an Uncle Joe or something with that weird gray beard. And uh, he always smelled a little bit like he was drinking, but you weren't sure. But, yeah, he just drove here, so I'm pretty sure – if we were to conduct a search of Mayor Jerry's desk right now at City Hall, little bottles, little bottles, airplane bottles, airplane bottles, yeah, and then a few floating in the tank. Of you don't think toilet. he has the uh, traditional globe in the uh, that? Oh, he's hood, got hood, oh, the hood globe. He's with got the, yeah, up there yep. The, he's got the stuff that shows that his office <laughs> is still hip from the seventies. He's got office alcohol, but his personal stash is always hidden. Like at his house, he's probably not allowed to drink much, so he's got it. He's got like a secret compartment behind books. Yeah. Yeah. So you think he's got the Mad Men bar in his office? He, he and that, and, okay. Because that's for other people to make him look normal. Right. But, but what he does have, to me, it looks like when Dick Van Dyke was drinking. That's what I see. <laughs> and there they are. That's There's him. This is gavel. That's the. They that's, have gavels yeah. to call the order, but Dave does it like that's he's a judge. That's the guy he threatened. That's the guy he threatened. Man. Yeah, the guy that showed up. And that's the dude that challenged Mayor Jerry to a fight. <laughs> and I'll boxing be honest match. with you, I don't know who wins that fight. I don't either. Now that I'm looking yeah. at it, this is not what I expected. I look at this and I'm like, Glendale Mayor looks older. Got some gin blossoms on that nose of his. Probably a little. His, his feet are probably a little wobbly. He's I'm, walking. I'm going with the parking lot attendant on this one. I think uh, the parking lot attendant's I think got nothing to lose. Parking lot attendant gasses out. He doesn't look like it's going to be a long fight. Yeah, because. And he's got the little The mayor's hands. going to the UFC fight because he feels he's got he's some. Got some well, he's on the, the west tank. side. He's got to bro it up. He's I mean, it's part of being out there. Do you think that that's why people went yeah. to the UFC fight? Oh, yeah. It's just in case they need an extra fight, I'm here. I cut I didn't from see that Mayor background. Jerry. I'm cut from that cloth. That's how Mayor Jerry rolled. He's badass. Well, if it didn't always feel like I was walking on jello from the alcohol, I would uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd be in that octagon. I'd be mayor of the octagon. You should be thanking me for this event. And then after every fight, I'd stand over my opponent, vanquished opponent, and I would say, eat, die, man. Because that's how Mayor Jerry rolls. Yeah. That's, that's ballsy. You go back the next day and have your secretary call Gila River to have a guy fired. Get over it, Mayor Jerry, you dick. Get and get in goddamn garage. line also. I don't like lines. So you know what I do? I don't get in them. I sit and wait. Like a decent human being. If I get out there and I see a parking garage has got the snake going, just sit in my car. Because that's what I'm going to be doing, trying to uh, – it's the same thing. Just wait for the parking garage to clear out. What's the point of getting – got to get in that goddamn line and then get mad at that. Line rage. Yeah, I sit there. You know why? Because then the phrase, oh, look at this asshole, will never fall out of my mouth while I'm trying to – this guy wants in. I let, I let the last guy and I'm not letting this guy. You just get, start getting mad at people. Just trying to go home. Sit in your car and shut up. Don't get in a fight with Nej Bauer. All that dude's trying to do is get A to B. He's in his 60s. He's working a parking garage. Mayor Jerry. I'll have your head on a platter. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Somebody says, do Mayor Jerry as Mayor Quimby from The Simpsons. I uh, do declare this uh, each and die day. <laughs> Can we have uh, one city council meeting where we don't end up burying a body? Yeah, he is kind of Mayor Quimby, but I think that's pretty cool. I don't know if Mayor Gallegos of Phoenix has that kind of chops. Eat my, you die. <laughs> Fire that man. <laughs> that they don't great. question the queen. No. Well, they question her, but does she have the chops to throw her labs around in a parking garage? She probably has a driver. 
it would be kind of cool. I, I used to think that would suck to have like a like your wife in charge or something like that. You know, like being mayor. But still, she's not allowed to work the car when you're. She can be the first. When you're going man. somewhere, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm driving. Trust me, I'm driving. <laughs> like to be Stedman, you know, Oprah still can't drive the car. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're, I, I, I'm driving. A man drives. I know you pay for all of this, and I know as a man, I acknowledge that. Women never acknowledge when a man pays for everything. That's just part of the deal. But when a woman does it, we have to acknowledge it all. I know it's all your stuff, and you pay for everything. But I'm still driving your ass around because I'm a man. I'm in charge. <laughs> so deep down, we know who's in charge of this thing. I can drive just as well as you. Yeah, but I'm not drunk right now, so <laughs> point is moot. <laughs> point is completely moot. Uh, also, I saw yesterday that somebody a couple days ago left a sixteen thousand dollar tip. At a, did you see that sixteen grand for some waitress got a sixteen thousand dollar tip, which is just fantastic. I've cash or on the credit on card? the credit card, thirty seven dollar bill. Wrote down it was in New Hampshire, sixteen thousand dollars. Did they have to question it? Yeah, I'm sure. The company, they, they oh, I'm did, sure. Well, they yeah. did right He's, before uh, he left. He used. Sir, I think you meant to write. I was giving you a generous tip, and they're like, "No, I think you added." I don't think the decimal's in the right spot. He goes, "It is." And uh, the bartender's name is Michelle. How about this? Like, can you imagine Matthias getting a sixteen thousand oh, dollar tip? You, she came home to you and said, "I got a sixteen thousand dollar tip." Five across the face. <laughs> What'd you do? What'd you do? <laughs> You where's know, my cut? Yeah, where's my A? Hey, give me half of that B. He was just being generous. In, 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 in Italian terms, she says, I got a $16,000 tip tonight. You mother... Hua! <laughs> it's assumed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you hua! What man gives you sixteen grand for nothing? You think I believe that, you hua? <laughs> you take a couple of shots in the chops. I can't believe you come home with this story! <laughs> I got it. It was just, it's on the news. Oh, my God. My name's out there with you, you who what? <laughs> An Italian man could never have his bartender girl from home with a $16,000 check and not hit her. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no, he says. Yep. He's, uh, that's 100% accurate. That just being straight. Fall yeah. into your lap. <laughs> that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. You're out there. Oh, man. You're, everybody's. He goes to the place, give me the tapes. <laughs> I want to see how long he was there. What's his name? And you get the check. You keep your 16 grand. She's no hua. <laughs> uh, but she didn't have an Italian boyfriend, so she got to tell the news. He's a kind man of mystery. <laughs> That's her quote. <laughs> oh, He's a kind mystery man. <laughs> she said to the news. Michelle McCudden is a bartender. You get the best bar name ever. And this is more proof that she did something for this. I don't buy. I don't buy this was just a straight-up generosity thing because she works at a place called the Stumble Inn Bar. <laughs> I think anybody going to the Stumble Inn would have 16 no, grand. exactly. <laughs> so it may be just some – in a place called Londonderry, New Hampshire. So some rich guy went into the Stumble Inn Bar. Let's see what wretched refuse works here. And he wanders in. He goes, oh, these poor people. They could use this more than I. And then writes the check to Michelle McCudden for 16 grand. Stumble Inn employee, your life has just changed. Bring this home to your beloved. And finds out, you hooah, did you blow that old English dick? <laughs> he just bought 4,000 acres. And uh, he ordered uh, two hot dogs, a cocktail, and some fried pickles. And asked for his bill. He's not a regular. They didn't recognize him. Uh, she looked on the credit card statement. They put it down next to the register and said three times, uh, uh, what is this? And then they split their tips there. So, oh, man. Yeah, I know. That, <laughs> that sucks. Dangerous, right? So you got to throw a few thousand to the idiots. Uh, said what made her flip it over and look and said, oh, my God, are you serious? And then I went back. Are you serious? And, and he goes, I want you to have it. You guys work really hard. And I guarantee you, she said, what, what do I have to do for I think we you both know what you need we to both do. Both know the answer to that, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> you hooah! <laughs> why do you think I ordered hot dogs? <laughs> and he said, "Yeah, why do you think I've been dropping hot dog hints all night long?" <laughs> <laughs> you hooah! <laughs> uh, yeah, she said, "I thought it was a mistake. It could have been maybe one hundred and sixty dollars. That would have been super generous too." But he added all those extra zeros. The bar manager talked to him. He said, "No, sixteen thousand. The restaurant pools are tips, so the money's going to be split." Eight servers on duty that night. Ugh. So that hooer blew that old Englishman for two grand. You hooer. We went up and thanked him as a group. It's just been a really rough year for all of us. For someone to do something like that really restored my faith in humanity. Well, let me, let me be the man who destroys that because not a single second of me believes 
You didn't do something to him in the bathroom. Nobody writes a sixteen thousand dollar check for nothing. At least a handy, huh? You give him, a, you give him an over the top old fashioned. <laughs> he ordered fashion. You gave him a drink, and he just went, mm mm. What do you mean? Uh uh-uh. uh. I said I wanted an old fashioned. I gave you one. No, you didn't. That's a drink. Muddle this. Oh. Hey, did you see how many zeros are on yeah. that damn bill? Here's the tip: if you muddle my nuts. <laughs> Like in a drink. You muddle my nuts while you Get give me... Get that little baseball bat. <laughs> give me the old-fashioned over-the-top muddle the nuts. And then get out the jigger, because I'm making three What ounces. did you say? The jigger. <laughs> it's New Hampshire. Man. Nobody even thinks that way in New Hampshire. <laughs> Actually, you're right. They'd say it, but they, they can scream it. Nobody's there. Marvin Hagler died. <laughs> Everybody said that when Marvin Hagler died, too. New Hampshire. Hampshire. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. <laughs> Going to New Hampshire. <laughs> Stumble in. He was at the Stumble in bar. 16 grand. But if she came home with $16,000, can you imagine? <sighs> would you but immediately? She, didn't, th- she came home with. I don't know if you'd be happy. I don't think Brett would be happy. You'd be happy nah. with two G's. No, no, no. That's what I. That's one thing I'd really have an issue with. You split it with them other yeah. whores? You get. <laughs> I'm out of here. What did those whores do? <laughs> Nothing. You didn't do enough. <laughs> so now you just suck some. For everybody else to make two grand? I got to pay taxes on your mouth now? <laughs> Give me that. What's his name? It would have been such but a great... But I'm the one that did the work. Such a great... I know. <laughs> Soprano scene would have been so good yeah. if Christopher went down and beat up anybody. Oh, Adriana man. Gaten. He gave me 60 grand, Christopher, because I'm good at my job. Nobody does that. Did you let him... F- you? Where do you get the nerve? Why does this happen in an Italian house every day? Did you? Am I not? <laughs> no, and then there's the. Hey, you guys yelling? Oh yeah! Look here, the whore got sixteen grand. It's my brother Tony. Oh, I heard you guys yelling. What's sixteen grand for? What do you think? Whore. <laughs> Why's your brother here? He heard us yelling because he lives next door. We live in the same street, all of us. Couple of laid out. Waiters in the parking lot and guys yeah. running. <laughs> <laughs> this ends today. <laughs> Stumble out, bitch. You could write a whole Sopranos about this. Oh, yeah. Up in where? New Hampshire? <laughs> John, I thought you said Trip was at your house last night, not up in New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah, it was Tuesday or last week or something. I want to give this to you. It's 16000 American dollars. <laughs> Spend it wisely, whore. <laughs> and here's some cheese. Yeah. And, and it's true. David Meadows makes a point. He emails. He said, and actually, the guy's a dick. Now they got to pay taxes on a split reported income. It's true. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll take uh, nothing. I then. wouldn't. I'd rather have just a normal tip and have my life be normal again. Or just give me the full sixteen. Got to pay the tax, the split. Somebody's got to claim the full thing. It's just you know, and if a real nice guy would come in, that's what I'm like with capital gains on well, an investment. Here's the here's what we get been nice. robbed. Yeah, it's true, Brady. I know. If, if a real decent human being that wants to give a waitress who or waitress sixteen grand for going the extra mile mm-hmm. would do it in cash. If you really cared about a waitress, you would do that extra tip in cash. What he was doing was uh, showboat on on record, or he was. <laughs> Running, running up his credit. And he's going to kill gonna himself. He's going to blank it out. <laughs> he's going to blank out and then eat pills. <laughs> yeah. I got 16 grand left. Let's follow up on this yeah. in a week. Where's the other guy? Because I bet you he's dangling from a, a rope right now. I got 16 grand in my account. You know what? I'll put it on the card and never pay it. That's what I would be concerned about. Anybody gave me $16,000 on a credit card, I'd be looking. I'm going, you're not going to be around much longer for, those, for fried pickles and a Coke. <laughs> I got 16 grand because I work so hard. You're going to kill yourself, aren't you? Yeah, I'm running up my tab. I'm going to max out all my cards. Well, running up more than 16 grand then, right. pal. Well, what maybe that's all he had left on. Oh, maybe he's got true. a $20,000 limit. He's been riding four. He went home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just surfing on the line. Just, Screw it. Screw you, American Express. 16000 maxed. He went home and he called and challenged the charge. <laughs> Which would have been bad. <laughs> that whore. This ends today. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I, it's skeptical. It's, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of skepticism in my brain about this sixteen thousand dollar tip being just a freebie. I, I wanted think. the points on the card. <laughs> the worst part is she mouthed off and had to show her manager, and then she had to split it for all right. that hooering. 
Nobody does that without a little extra. <clears throat> Nobody. And we do definitely, uh, yeah, well, I worked in restaurants before. I got a $100 tip once from two gay guys, and I felt like I had to do something for them, and I didn't. I just stayed away from them after I got the tip. I didn't want to go out there anymore. <laughs> gay dudes liked me when I was 18, blonde. <laughs> and I just looked like, you know why? I looked like an orphan. I was always kind of disheveled. I didn't look like I had it together. I think I looked like a victim. My hair was beach crazy. You guys like to sit in a certain stage? Yeah, we want to sit with the Tuesday's kid over there. Yeah, he's unattractive, but there's something about him. He's so thin. Have you seen the charity case over oh, there? Man, this poor kid's got something wrong with him. Give him 100 bucks and put him in the back of the El Dorado. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a ride home? No, I got a car. I'm good. Mm, get in anyway. It's another C-note in it for you. Your bike can fit in the trunk. How come all these gay guys keep wanting to blow me? Can I get, like, sporting event tickets and stuff? <laughs> sure, with season tickets. You just lay in the back of the El Dorado and change your clothes into this. It's a flamingo suit. Just put it on. Yeah, I've, I've gotten one uh, one of those ever. It was 100 bucks. I think they spent 35 40 bucks. which today's, you know, 30 years ago, that's probably a $70 tap. And they gave me a $100 tip and then looked at me like I owed them something. I felt terrible. I didn't want it. I mean, I took it, but I didn't want it. They gave it to me in cash. It was a $100 bill. Is that the gay guys? Yeah. And I still felt weird. So you, if they had, if that was $1,000, I would have had to do something. Candies. <laughs> I don't know if I'd give them handies for 1000 bucks, but I'd have kissed them. I'd have French kissed them. <laughs> do you guys need me to French kiss you or something? Mmm. Uh, <laughs> oh. Thanks, guys. Um, for another zero. All right, I'll give you a hand job. For yeah. <laughs> just take that big wood pepper grinder and just start grinding <laughs> yeah, in front of him. Thank you so much. <laughs> we didn't have those. At the, Tony Romans didn't have the pepper grinder. Had I known, he'd have brought one in. <laughs> what if I put? Yeah. What if I put a two where the one is for two grand? All right. <laughs> and then a little hand action. What if I put a five there? Jesus Christ. Okay. I'm gonna get in there. <laughs> You really liked your ribs Oh, tonight. look, ranch dressing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Come on, Brady. <laughs> Don't make it flavory and delicious. <laughs> I'm being a whore. Yeah, I don't trust any waitress that got one of them lucky tips. She, she tells that story so her, and then calls the news and stuff so her husband or her boyfriend doesn't get mad for what really went down. She tried to blow the rich guy, and it worked. And it doesn't work all the time. I count. You worked in a restaurant, Toledo. Oh, Countless yeah. amount of waitresses banged the. That is one thing that I've always told that my buddy Chuck Powell used to do. That we'd go to bars and he's like, "That's the bartender into me." Like Chuck, they're paid to act like they like you. It's no different than strippers. Uh, M- 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 Thaya has to do it all the oh, time yeah. and act like she likes half the right. regulars. Good ones know how to. They play know how the to game. work the room. Exactly. And act like you're fun. I like when you come in and they work it and then they make those those everyday bar guys, those bar flies, feel like this. I got a shot with her, but I don't want to. Wreck our friendship. <laughs> then I can't come into my favorite bar. But she's got to play the game and like bend over funny every once in a while and give her that Messiah when she bends over. It's like a, <laughs> like a goddamn trip to the moon. Adjust the cans every now and then. I feel like a Neil Armstrong every time she drops something. Small step for man, one giant leap for my pants. <laughs> but if Matthias comes home with seventy dollars cash, Brad's like, "What happened? What'd you do, you whore? This ain't doing enough. This ends today." <laughs> <laughs> but they know how. But my friend Chuck, you say, oh, she's into me. She is into me. I'm like, they'll bang you, too. But if, she, if, if, if a waitress will bang you, she's banging about seven or eight of the other customers. Minimum. Minimum. Because that's how she's getting you to come back, and then you're going to start handing her big. That's why. And one of the managers. And if they start dating you, that's And then different. one of the kitchen guys. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, you know. you. I don't know that you were. I think you turned a blind eye to how much d- dirty, filthy sex was going on at Porkopolis. But there was a lot of it. I was woked. You got woke. You, I told you about it. Oh, that doesn't happen. Oh, Brady, it does. And especially when you found out the waitress was pregnant with the cook's child. Yeah, that was the, <laughs> that was the part yeah, I was, Immediately, like the first well, month of the restaurant. I understand the, uh, the... I knew about the managerial thing. Sure. At the oh, waitresses and whatever, the managers. Yeah. They think good chefs. But yeah. I, would ne- yep. I never thought uh, a guy that's been in and out of jail... The cooks, just, the cooks are the ones who do all the work with the waitresses. They get the, they get the best yeah. ones. And in your case was the case. That one waitress you had that was that 
She was a beautiful woman. The giraffe. Knocked, knocked out by the fry cook. <laughs> yeah, the giraffe. In and out of jail. In and out of jail. They're, they're garnishing wages out of his check every week. I got to pay. Oh. The next thing you know, she's like, I got to stop working here because Javier got me pregnant. <laughs> I just wanted to see her bring her, Javier home to her Gilbert family. Yeah. There's no way that that was supposed to happen, but it did. I banged the giraffe, you guys. All right, that's what we do. We're cooks. Hello, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Can I call you Dad, Mr. Harris? <laughs> what is this hair? This this filthy little hairy thing in my house says that it's the father of my grandchild. You are my dad now. Because that tall lady that you call your daughter is my bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, so never, the, the, the staff will hump you. But uh, I used to tell my friend Chuck all the time. Don't bang the help. Chuck's old enough to know better. And, I mean, what? and he lo- and so this is Chuck's story. We're at a bar. The waitress looks like Megan Fox. She's expressing interest in everybody. Uh, Chuck's like, she's like, I got it. I'm like, then do it, but don't bang the help. You're gonna be. This is gonna be bad. And this is a, I swear, hand to Brady's God, true story about how this ends. So he goes out with her on a date. So we're on a date. She's acting a little weird. I got to admit, but she looked amazing. She was beautiful. So she's getting these texts, and she goes, I'm a little concerned. I'm like, what is it? Well, my ex-boyfriend knows I'm out with a guy. So uh, next thing you know, Chuck's in her driveway saying goodnight. So I am, we're making out. I got my hand on those beautiful boobs. And all of a sudden, a helicopter and a light <laughs> hits the car. And she says, you've got to go. The dude had been following them all night long. The neighbor saw some guy acting weird in a bush and called the police and said, there's some guy climbing around the bushes in front of this young girl's home. I don't know if she's in there or not, but he's, this is not right. Like he's sneaking around. He's got a mask on. He's he's, he's bouncing from front yard to front yard to get a better view of Chuck trying to throw fingers in his ex. (laughs) <laughs> so there I am. I get out of the car. The helicopter spotlights me. I run. I'm like, why? <laughs> why? I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> so I run to my car. Please stop running. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then the neighbor comes out. It's not him. It's over here. It's over here. And the cops are in the street. What's going on? The guy had evidently threatened to kill her that night. She was worried. He's like, uh, nuts. You think? He was a former regular at the bar. She went out with, banged a little bit. He got a little too attached, didn't know what to do. Put Chuck in the middle of it. Put Chuck in the middle of it. And And I told him, he goes, you could not be more right. About not banging the help, and I'm like, I told you this a long ago, Chuck. But I and think was I was that Chuck's last foray. No, because no. he didn't learn his lesson. <laughs> yeah. So I was at Montauk the other day. But I'm oh, good God. at it. God <laughs> damn it! This beautiful angel comes. Tri- I he mean, kept rolling with it. Oh, I kept banging hey. help, and then he's like, Montauk's different than Zips. <laughs> like, no, they're not a higher class of waitress. They're just banging better people. <laughs> <laughs> this situation's the yeah, same. Banging Chuck. guys in Scottsdale versus dudes at 16th and Bethany. You're an idiot. <laughs> It was it was weird, but yeah, Chuck used to always try to bang the waitress. I'm like, you think that's stop. how the conversation went? <laughs> Hi, welcome to my my establishment, Porkopolis. Lo siento, señor Bogan, me golape con la jirafa. <laughs> what does that mean? Sorry, Mister Bogan, I banged your giraffe. <laughs> oh no, John was right. The cooks bang the hot ones. <laughs> Yeah, waitresses and waiters, they bang each other. And you know that. Oh. Absolutely. And, and you, I've also heard that the best drugs are in the k- kitchen, too. <laughs> There's, oh, my it, God. You need, you need the hookup? Yeah. It's in the kitchen. I'm surprised that Tony Roma's, uh, that El or Chapo. Or the busboy that's been there five oh, yeah. years. Oh, really? I'm surprised El Chapo didn't pop up out of the dishwashing <laughs> station every once in a while. I didn't realize what kind of drugs were being run under there. I always wondered why the dishwasher was so beloved. And always had a massive backpack because I was unaware of what that was. But who brings a backpack to wash dishes? What's in your backpack? <laughs> what? I don't want to talk to the dishwasher. Why does everybody like this guy? He's, he's, he's retarded. Rupric, over he's here. He's like 25. He's washing dishes. How did he get that Cadillac? Oh, <laughs> uh, John, if only Brady's restaurants could have just held out a little long enough 
for Kirby to be oh, a Oh, and you would have done that. Hostess. You would have rosy colored glasses <laughs> that. I'm going to put Kirby Derbs in charge of the waitresses. It's going to teach her a work ethic. Daddy, I got to let you know, so I got pounded last night by Jose, <laughs> the fry guy. Because that's what happens in a restaurant. Daddy, it's just nature. John, you don't know what you're talking about. We will love him <laughs> and welcome to our family. I am in foal, old man, and it is with a Mexican brood. John, what are you talking about? <laughs> that waitress is super into me. I know it for a fact. Signed the Love Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> a baby grows in my belly that is going to need salsa, Daddy. That is a fact. <laughs> we set up a pinata and fill it with blue or pink because something's coming out of me thanks to Jose. Little Ding! S- Onion rings are done. This little serrano pepper is going to be... <laughs> We're going to have great Sunday dinners. This ends today! They call him the, <laughs> the Amore Lobo. <laughs> Brett, I got a problem. <laughs> Steak you need. Which one is it? It's about five eight. He's got dark hair. He's Mexican. You got it. I'm gonna kill everybody in your restaurant. If you got to be more specific. <laughs> I don't paint houses for everything. Jesus Christ, that's like they're mirror images of each other. Which one knocked up your daughter? I don't know. Hold on, Kirby. Which one gives you gooey eyes? The one in the middle, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Wait a minute. No, it's the one on the right. No, wait. It's it's. He's not working tonight. I feel like Scarface. Tony Montana, his, uh, his sister. <laughs> he loves his and sister too yeah. much. Oh, oh! Which one of you guys polluted my daughter's womb? Which one did it? Which? What are you talking about? Yesterday or you've all done it? We're the cooks, of course. <laughs> what do we do? They, she thinks we're all the same guy. We have the same card, same ID, same social security, same clown car, the same car. We all have the same plate. We all. All names are Jose Gutierrez. She thinks we're the same guy. (laughs) DNA test. It's going to come back all of us. Well, we'll get some time on Maury. Do not bang the help. John, I ran into Chuck Powell in Scottsdale a few times during the Edge 103.9 days. That guy always had a chick on his arm. That wasn't his first helicopter spotlight. No, no. Chuck's got stories. (laughs) Chuck has stories. Yeah, there's another one where a guy went nuts and watched Chuck making out with a girl through a window. What? Oh, yeah. He always well because he was always dating waitresses. They got stories. <laughs> You're forbidden. lucky. Ma- Matthias is normal. She probably yeah. had a stretch there. It was like her life went crazy. And That's possible. Normal. Yeah. Ask her if she knows Chuck. Yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck banged. Chuck banged her. There's no doubt. You just gonna have to deal with that. Oh. Yeah, Megan was a, Megan was a waitress at Rock Bottom when she was like 19, and I remember introducing her to Chuck. And he goes, Rock Bottom. Oh no! <laughs> oh, you nailed that. Too. <laughs> the waitress. She really was into me. <laughs> he took some waitress home. To her house again, which is the smart move, and he's banging the couch or doing all sorts of dry hump and whatever, and then some guy starts pounding, get off of her! What's going on? <laughs> and he kind of wakes up to the reality that he's hitting a waitress from a sports bar. Calm uh, down, Mayor. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, Mayor Weirs. You need to eat! Die! Get off of her! She's mine! <laughs> you whoa! How many guys are out there? <laughs> I'm the love wolf. Ooh, <laughs> get off of me. This is craziness. Yeah, don't bring the help. It's just a basic story. Just a little PSA there. Two things to know today. No chicken little on the suns and don't bang the help. They're supposed to. It's like suns dancers. I had a friend fall in love with a suns dancer. We went to one game and we were sitting like third or fourth row and there's an aisle there. And between, it was four or five years ago, between uh, you know plays, the suns dancers used to come out and dance in the aisles. And we're like, from me to you. She had no choice but to look at us. Like, we were Remember a f- foot and a half away. And my buddy's like, well, that was, you were at, not at the game that this happened. Yeah. But, but what happened? You, you, same the seats. Those and, were the same seats. Yeah. And, and, and he's like, oh my God. So he starts talking to her. What are you doing? <laughs> She's right there. I'm like, I know. She, that's by design. When they rehearse it, she goes to that spot. It doesn't matter who's in this seat. She's got a smile at you. <laughs> Smile's electric. Like you need to you need to go masturbate and get this out of your system. This is ridiculous. It wasn't Chuck, right? No, <laughs> no. But then later, I was with the Suns dancer <laughs> and uh, Amari Stoudemire's like in the bushes. <laughs> yeah, he got spotlit by Firebird One from the Phoenix Police Department, and he ran to his car. Looked totally terribly guilty. I don't know. And then so I asked her later. I'm like, "Are we done? 
Like, Chuck, you're, what are you talking about? You wanted to continue this relationship? There was a marauder in the bush that was going to stab you. But she looks just like Megan Fox. <laughs> you want to do something tomorrow? I think he did go back and get her. I think he did finish the deal. That was right before he moved. She wants to move to Seattle with me. Yeah, of course she does. She wants to get away from the killer. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> She's tired of the helicopter. You know what's going to happen? The dude's moving to Seattle, too. He's going to find out where she lives. Yeah. She maintains an Instagram. The second she's standing in front of that needle, that dude's getting on a plane. Once Airwolf finds out where you move. <laughs> right. I got to move to the Emerald City. She's there. Everything seemed fine for the first couple of weeks. Yeah, because he hadn't gotten there yet. And there he was. <laughs> dressed as a Sasquatch, standing in my yard. <laughs> yeah, don't beg the help. How many people were preg- impregnated at your place? I noticed that your hiring practices went to older gentlemen after the I know after the of two. Pregnant. Two pregnancies due to the poor couples. Yeah. There's two poor couples. Two separate, yeah. Babies. One Chandler, one in Scotts. Fantastic. Each restaurant got one. Yeah. Cooks both? Um, no. Wait- um, the waiter, waitress. Cook and thing. Chandler and cook, waitress, and Chandler. Was pizza the one that got pregnant? The one that looked like Little Caesar? Yep. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he hired a waitress that looked like the Little Caesar's logo. <laughs> Yeah, and I knew it when Within I walked in. Within weeks. But I didn't know that everyone had already started calling her Pizza Pizza because <laughs> she looked exactly like him. <laughs> and she had like a pizza, lo- like a tattoo because people had been calling her for that, years. Yeah. Well, so she got knocked up by one of the yeah. staff. Within like a month. Isn't that great? That's re- that's restaurants. Those middling restaurants. Eh? Red Robin. I, 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 and I, we you know, had our, uh, well, we had an intern too. Oh, that's right. She went and worked at a restaurant, got knocked up immediately. Yep. And added two more to the... At the restaurant? Oh, that's right. She ended up having three. Yeah, that waitress looked just like Pizza Pizza Guy. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Same, exa- same exact everything. Yep. Pizza Pizza. And she was sweeping with her broom. And Brady's partner, Matt, comes out and he grabs the broom and he, and he smashes her hand up and he goes, Pizza Pizza. And I'm like, oh my God, we all know? We're, 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 we can say it? Because I'm thinking it. He's right. And she was uh, she had babies at Porkopolis babies. That's adorable, Brady. Uh, what do you got on the big board of musical treats, Brad? <laughs> All right, the wake up song brought to you guys by our buddies over there at Action Ride Shop. Hit the trails this weekend. You got to hit up Action Ride Shop as well. Get that bike serviced. If uh, if you're if you got an old clunker at the house. Need to get it fixed. They work on all brands. They got the best wrenches in town. Or if you just need to get a new bike, they will hook you up up there or rent you one or whatever you need. And they also have those uh, Phoenix Suns ish yeah, jersey. jerseys. The throwback. Yeah. You so get, I have one and I actually peeled it up yesterday. I'm yeah. Like, it's kind of weird last night to watch the game. But then I, I forgot that like 15 years ago, the Suns actually gave me a jersey. So I've got the old Steve Nash era. Oh, nice. So it's too big. It looks like a dress, but I wore it last night. But yeah, the next game. And maybe I'll wear that uh, action ride shop thing when I go to the Clippers game. You mean you're still going? Like, <laughs> the sky's falling. But you know what you should do? <laughs> bang one of the ladies that gives you beers. She's smiling at me. I, I caught the vibe. Like you gave her $20 for a beer. Of course she's smiling. <laughs> so ch- check them out on Facebook as well as on Instagram at Action Ride Shop. Uh, they've got a bunch of stuff up here. Uh, Hail the Apocalypse for the game the other day for these uh, naysayers. Uh, Avatar, yeah. uh, Austrian <laughs> Death Machine, Ozzy, Drowning Pool, Slayer. Let's go right to that. Hail the Apocalypse. All right. For all the people who have just, the, the sun suck, the world's come to an end. I guarantee you there'll be people quoting what I said at work. Oh, you know, if one for Paul George missing those free throws, Clippers would be up to one. We're not the better team. There are going to be a bunch of people. Losing their minds at work today, all depressed and down. Uh, d- stop riding waves like that. Understand. Broomhead already texted in from KTR going, oh, your Steelers sure did. Yeah, but we, we went into a funk and collapsed. Absolutely. It can happen. But you don't worry about it after one loss. You just don't. One loss does not mean that you're in a collapse. Three is a collapse. You're done. You lose three in a row, you're in trouble. Like, that's when they're in big trouble. You can't constantly have sweeps happen in the Western Conference Finals. It never does. Finals. The finals are usually evenly matched teams playing fairly well. It's and that's just how not going to happen. Nope. Uh, are the Suns a better team? I think so. Yeah. Is it true that they could be down 2-1 right now? Yes, but they're not. So the coulda, shouldas are out the door. You got trounced last night at a bad game. All they need to do is get Mikel Bridges, Jay Crowder to start hitting threes. Booker and Paul will correct themselves. It'll be fine. 
The reason Booker and Paul are having rough nights is because nobody else is hitting consistently. They can throw defense at those two all night. Today, they're shooting for eight hours. Yeah, they're just going to be in there. They're going to be in there game planning the idea of, all right, if our outside wing guys aren't hitting shots and Aiton isn't getting open, how are we going to combat these double teams? That the, I mean, Beverly and Reggie Jackson were – man, that team's easy to hate. Looking at that, they just look like the bad guys in uh, uh, Boys in the Hood. Yeah. <laughs> they just look like the – Crenshaw like, Mafia yeah, yeah, mother. Yeah, that's, that's the one. <laughs> you look like one of them Crenshaw Mafia mother to me. <laughs> they just look tough. They look like – they look Especially like since they, they got that old English yeah, like yeah, they, writing they, they and look, stuff. They yeah. look like they're supposed to remind yeah, us of games. Oh, yeah, those are good uniforms. Yeah. To rattle you. Mm-hmm. But it does. And Tripp stood behind me. I hate Patrick Beverly. Like, I'm like, I didn't really, I can't stand looking at him. I'm like, Jesus, Tripp's fired up. He's hard to watch, but I'd love to have him on the Suns. If the Suns signed Patrick Beverly, I'd be like, yeah. Now there's something. You get Crowder and Beverly on the same floor, you dead. But I hate him on the other team. He's like Danny Ainge. Just, I hate Danny Ainge. He starts playing for your team. You're like, this guy's great. I kind of like Ainge. Yeah. You know, everybody I, hated Rodman uh, when he played somewhere else, but when he's on your team, he's like, this guy's great. Yeah. So Who would be that? would be definitely the top five Ainge. You know Lampier. who was hard to like outside of being on the Suns? Chris Paul. If you don't like the Suns, him running his mouth for 48 minutes, yeah, is he's very easy to hate if he's not on your team. Because he's also kicking your ass most of the time. Me going back, that'd be Gary Payton, too. Gary Payton. Wow. I love the mouth. Just never ending. Blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But Reggie Jackson looks like Sam Cassell got tall and put on glasses. It's just so hard to hear that on the NBA. Reggie Jackson. Reggie, yeah. yeah. I had to do a double take. I'm like, uh-huh. what did he say? Reggie, Reggie, Reggie Jackson Jr.? <laughs> Get that man a candy bar. Uh, anyway, for all you people who are just moping around today, it's over. It's all over. But deep down, you have to act like a girl fan. Everything's fine. They're up 2-1. Come home 3-1. You did exactly what you needed to do. Split in L.A. Oh, my gosh. Shut the front door. You've been listening to Holmberg's Mickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com.